the end of this module, you will be able to understand the usage of primary MUX in Indian Railways, digital multiplexing process, how signaling information is carried on pulse code modulation. You will also learn the constituents of primary MUX, the ITUT recommendations of relevance, RDSO specifications for primary MUX, the types of primary MUX and their modules. You will also understand the installation, configuration and circuit development of primary MUX, the network management and supervision software usage and the maintenance and troubleshooting of the primary MUX. Usage of primary MUX in train traffic control. In train traffic control systems on OFC backbone, primary drop insert MUX equipment is used to provide omnibus VF channels for various control circuits and also point-to-point -point circuits. At digital microwave radio stations, we can use primary MUX equipment to provide channels for radio patch of control circuits. Let us observe the train traffic control diagram shown on the screen. Let us learn the usage of primary MUX in organizational communication. Transmission networks based on digital microwave radio use primary MUX and higher order 2x34 MUX as the channeling equipment. Transmission networks on OFC use primary MUX as basic entry at 2 megabits per second data rate. In both cases, the primary MUX provides 2 megabits per second data stream as an aggregate of different circuits through different interfaces. Primary MUX provides 2 megabits per second connectivity between exchanges in hierarchical switching system. Transmission networks based on digital microwave radio or OFC use primary MUX as basic interface at 2 megabits per second data rate. Primary MUX provides the following data circuit interfaces for data networks of Indian Railways. V24 for low speed data circuits that is 9.6 kilobits per second. V35 and G703 for 64 kilobits per second data circuits. Fundamentals of Multiplexing when huge investments are made on transmitter, receiver and transmission medium arrangement, it is desirable that we transmit as many channels as possible using the same medium. This is achieved through a process called multiplexing, where several message signals are combined for simultaneous or near simultaneous transmission over the same channel. FDM Frequency Division Multiplexing In FDM, through continuous wave modulation, each message signal is translated to reside in a specific frequency slot inside the passband of the channel by assigning it a distinct carrier frequency. At the receiver, a bank of filters are used to separate different modulated signals and each of the separated signal is then demodulated. The human voice band of 0 to 4 kilohertz is packed into a basic group of 12 voice inputs from 60 to 108 kilohertz, which again is packed into a super group of 5 groups ranging from 312 to 552 kilohertz.
TDM time division multiplexing in TDM message signals are passed through low pass filters to contain them within certain maximum frequency the signals are then sampled at regular intervals in a sequential manner and the encoded samples are framed sequentially that is placed in non overlapping time slots the process of tdm is shown on the screen The advantages of time division multiplexing over frequency division multiplexing is shown on the screen. What is digital multiplexing? Digital multiplexing is a process where multiple analog signals in digitized form or multiple data signals or both are combined into one digital stream on time shared basis so as to utilize available bandwidth for example in telecommunications several voice data and video signals may be transferred as a combined stream over a communication channel a reverse process known as demultiplexing can extract the original channels on the receiver side a device that performs the multiplexing is called a multiplexer and a device that performs the reverse process is called a demultiplexer in general the term mux equipment means combination of multiplexer and demultiplexer concept of multiplexing voice data and video is shown on screen framing in digital multiplexing as digital multiplexing involves combining several voice data and video signals it has to pack the digits of voice or data or video traffic their signaling bits alignment bits error check bits alarm bits and supervisory bits into the regular and hierarchical frame patterns suitable for real time transmission in a digital communication system hence we need to understand where the digital multiplexing and demultiplexing fit in a digital communication system role of multiplexing and demultiplexing in digital communication system is shown on the screen more information about source and destination more information about source encoder and decoder more information about channel encoder and decoder use of channel encoder and decoder is the fallout of channel coding theorem and shown on the screen implications of channel coding theorem are shown on screen
More information about modulator and demodulator is shown on screen. More information about communication channel is shown on screen. More information about modulator and demodulator is shown on screen. More information about channel encoder and decoder. Use of channel encoder and decoder is the fallout of channel coding theorem and shown on the screen. Implications of channel coding theorem are shown on screen. More information about source encoder and decoder. Use of source encoder and decoder is a fallout of source coding theorem. Examples are given on the screen. More information about source and destination. Voice. Human voice signals lie in the 300 to 3400 hertz range. However, we consider bandwidth up to 4 kilohertz. Video. Television signal. The two-dimensional picture form is converted to a one-dimensional waveform through a spatial sampling process known as raster scanning. The bandwidth of these signals is 4.2 megahertz. Data. Facsimile. Fax machines operating at 4.8 kilobits per second and 9.6 kilobits per second are common. Machines operating at 64 kilobits per second are also available. Computer generated data. Each character is represented by 7 bits and the 8th bit is used as the parity bit. Thus, 1 byte or 8 bits is used for transmission of each character. Evolution of Digital Multiplexing The evolution of digital multiplexing is closely linked to advances in transmission technology from carrier communication to digital radio to OFC. Standardization works or futuristic plans by CCITT or ITUT's study groups with four years assignments, tracking and requirements of networking and switching of various traffics. Let us now have a look at the work done by CCITT or ITUT's study groups in this regard. Contribution of CCITT or ITUT's study groups to digital multiplexing is shown on screen. It may be noted that ITUT replaced CCITT on 1st March 1993. The work continued and digital multiplexing evolved to provide necessary transmission structure for ISDN user network interface. Transmission structure for ISDN user network interface is shown on screen. Generations of multiplexing hierarchies. The three generations of multiplexing hierarchies are Plesiochronus digital hierarchy or PDH, Synchronous Digital Hierarchy or SDH and Optical Transport Hierarchy or OTH. The multiplexing hierarchies 
of various countries are shown on the screen. To understand the primary multiplexing process, we have to learn the encoding process for pulse code modulation. This consists of sampling, quantization and encoding. Sampling rate. What shall be the sampling rate and why? According to Nyquist theorem, the sampling rate must be at least twice the highest frequency contained in the signal. The Nyquist sampling criteria is shown on the screen. Recovery of a sample signal is shown on the screen. Let us see some examples. Let us learn what is quantization. An example with 8 quantization levels is shown on the screen. Quantization noise. Because of quantization process, that is, Rounding off sample value to the nearest quantization level, an approximation is being done, which is called quantization noise. Quantization levels required for telephone channel. According to CCITT recommendations, G703, signal to quantization noise ratio for telephone channel shall be better than 45 dB. This can be achieved with n equal to 8 because with n equal to 8 we get signal to noise ratio in dB that is 49.8 dB. Concept of non-uniform quantization is shown on screen. Description of A law and mu law is shown on the screen. PSQM test for A law and mu law. PSQM stands for Perceptual Speech Quality Measurement. The PSQM test is based on the ITU T P861 and P50 recommendations. P861 defines a method for estimating the subjective quality of voice band speech codes. It is designed to measure the quality of voice channels, especially where traditional transmission impairment measurements, that is TIMS, cannot be used. The method is based on research in human psychoacoustics perception. It assigns an objective figure of merit to a voice channel that is equivalent to that which would be assigned by serving real human listeners. More information about PSQM test is shown on the screen. Application of A law and mu law in pulse code modulation is shown on screen.
Let us learn what is done in encoding. Data rate calculations for PCM channel is shown on screen. To understand the pulse code modulation demultiplexing process, we have to learn the pulse code modulation decoding process. What is E1 frame? A E1 frame is an aggregate of encoded samples of 30 channels. To form this frame, 8 bit encoded samples of each channel are multiplexed by byte interleaving. In this process, frame alignment signal, CRC bits, supervisory bits, alarm bits, and also signaling bits of each voice channel are integrated into E1 frame. Since every channel is sampled at 8 kHz, the encoded sample from every channel is to be offered to E1 frame after every 125 microsecond. Hence, the duration of E1 frame is 125 microsecond. The frame repeats with successive samples from each channel. E1 frame structure is shown on screen. Data rate calculation for E1 frame is shown on screen. Description of time slot 0 is shown on screen. Description of time slot 16 is given on the screen. Frame alignment procedure is shown on screen. Concept of multi-frame is shown on screen. Signaling in telephony. In any telephony system, call is established after exchange of certain information about the state of the subscriber line. Signaling in telephony can be classified as subscriber line signaling, Inter-exchange signaling. Pulse code modulation provides connectivity between exchanges. Hence, we need to know how inter-exchange signaling information is converted to signaling bits which are sent over nominated time slots in PCM frame. Inter-exchange signaling process. Loop signaling. Description of loop signaling is shown on screen. Signal state in loop signaling is shown on the screen. E and M signaling are two. Description of E and M signaling is shown on screen. Signaling state in E and M signaling is shown on screen. Two signaling and modified R2 signaling. Description of R2 signaling is shown on the screen. Description of modified R2 signal is shown on the screen. Description of modified R2 signaling. Since mentioning of frequency each time is cumbersome, index or weight code is used. As we send two frequencies for each signal, we denote them by weight codes, that is, 0 plus 1 for F0 plus F1. Bit assignments 
in time slot 16 is shown on screen. Loop signaling card details are shown on the screen. Loop signaling card details are shown on the screen. Signaling states when E and M card under test is operating as outgoing converter are shown on the screen. Signaling states when E and M card under test is operating as incoming converter is shown on the screen. Terminal type configuration is one of the types of primary MUX equipment used in Indian Railways. In this equipment, the channel derivation is at VF level. The main difference between the terminal type MUX and drop insert MUX is that terminal type MUX generates a single stream of 2.048 megabits per second per E1 stream for interfacing a single direction. By switch setting in the tributary card, the MUX can be configured as a terminal MUX or as a drop insert MUX. The drop insert type of primary MUX equipment is another type used in Indian Railways. In this equipment, channel derivation is on time slot basis. It reduces hardware, dropping of channels from the incoming tributary and insertion for outgoing tributary can be programmed on E1 time slot basis. If drop insert MUX is not used, then two terminal MUXs are needed for channel dropping and insertion at VF level. Presently, drop insert MUXs are interfaced to one of the E1's derived form STM equipment working on OFC. Channels are programmed as per required applications. Let us understand the different types of modules in a primary MUX equipment. Network interface module, tributary module, voice access module, data interface module, power supply module. Network interface module. The network interface module is used for exchange of information among the network manager, the tributary module, and the various access modules interconnected via the back plane. The tributary module is the heart of the system which interfaces to the 2 megabits per second stream and realizes the add drop function of the channel through digital cross connect. Voice Access Module For voice channels, various interface options are available to suit the customer requirement. Some manufacturers provide independent voice access module for each variety of interface, that is, E&M, Exchange, Subscriber, and Hotline. Some manufacturers provide a common voice access module and support the various interfaces with adapter modules and can be plugged in. Voice access module can be for 2 or 4 or 6 or 8 channels. Data interface module To exploit the network bandwidth efficiently for data communication, time slots TS30 and TS31 are extended to both slots 8 and 9 on the sub rack. However, this does not limit the user of these slots for voice communication if required. Power Supply Module 
The power supply unit operates from 48 volt supply. Power supply unit or PSU has three separate switching power supply modules. One for plus 5 volts, one for plus minus 10 volt and another for plus 80 volts. They are also mutually isolated from each other. Relevant ITUT recommendations for primary MUX are G701, G702, G703, G704, G705, G706, G711, G712, G732, and G823. Let us learn the ITUT recommendations of relevance for primary MUX. G701 recommendation deals with vocabulary of digital transmission, multiplexing, and pulse code modulation terms. G702 recommendation deals with digital hierarchy bit rates. G704 recommendation deals with synchronous frame structures used at 1544, 2048, 6312, 8448, 3436, Eight and four four seven three six kilobits per second. Hierarchical levels. G seven zero five recommendation deals with characteristics of plesiochronous digital hierarchy equipment function blocks. Let us understand the recommendations of G seven zero three. This is a standard which originally described voice over digital networks. It's a CCITT recommendation which is associated with the PCM standard. Voice to digital conversion according to PCM requires a bandwidth of 64 kilobits per second resulting in the basic unit for G703. By multiplication this results in T1 and E1. Modern networks are working with voice and data and so is G703. G703 is the electrical and functional description. Other characteristics are described in other G standards. G703 can be transported over balanced 120 ohm wires and unbalanced 75 ohms coaxial wires. The balanced version with a speed of 64 kilobits per second has three different ways of transmission. The details of co-directional transmission is shown on the screen. The details of co-directional transmission is shown on the screen. The details of central direction transmission is shown on the screen. The details of contra direction transmission are shown on the screen. Highlights of G703 for speeds higher than 64 kbps is shown on screen. Highlights of CRC, fault handling and framing in G703 is shown on screen. ITUT recommendations of relevance. G706 recommendation deals with frame alignment and cyclic redundancy check procedures related to basic frame structures defined in recommendation G704. 
G712 recommendation deals with transmission performance characteristics of PCM channels. G732 recommendation deals with characteristics of primary PCM multiplex equipment operating at 2048 kilobits per second speed. G823 recommendation deals with control of jitter and wander on PDH networks of E hierarchy that is E1, E2, E3 and E4. International Standards of Relevance for G711 G711 is an ITUT standard for audio compounding. It is primarily used in digitized voice transmission in PCM. The standard was released in 1972. G711 represents logarithmic compression and expansion of PCM samples for signals of voice frequencies sampled at the rate of 8000 samples per second. There are two algorithms under G711. These are mu law algorithm and a law algorithm. A law was specifically designed to be simpler for a computer to process. The mu law and a law algorithms encode 14 bit and 13 bit signed linear PCM samples respectively to logarithmic 8 bit samples. Thus, the G711 encoder will create a 64 kilobit per second bit stream for a signal sampled at 8 kilohertz. Features Sampling frequency 8 kilohertz 64 kilobit per second bit rate Typical algorithm delay is 0 0.125 milliseconds with no look ahead delay when data is sent over E0, MSB is sent first and LSB is sent last. G711 Appendix 1 defines a packet loss concealment algorithm to help hide transmission losses in a packet sized network. G711 Appendix 2 defines a discontinuous transmission algorithm which uses voice activity detection and comfort noise generation to reduce bandwidth usage during silence period. A-Law A-Law encoding thus takes a 13-bit signed linear audio sample as input and converts it to an 8-bit value. This is shown on the screen. The details of A-Law versus Mu-Law is shown on screen. IRS specifications for primary MUX issued by RDSO under specification number IRS TC68 of 2004 covers the requirements for 2.048 megabits per second primary MUX with programmable features configurable as terminal or drop insert MUX with or without conference facility. This specification includes general requirements for primary MUX, types of interfaces, technical requirements of primary MUX, aggregate side, technical requirements of primary MUX, channel side, drop insert requirement, conference facility requirement, reliability considerations, power supply requirement, electromagnetic compatibility requirement, tests to be carried out on the primary MUX, indenting description, and environmental conditions. General requirements of primary MUX are The system shall conform to all the relevant and current ITUT recommendations. Manufacture and assembly of this equipment shall be made according to the standard practices adopted by International Electrotechnical Commission and in accordance with RDSO specification 48 of 2003. 
failure of any channel unit associated with primary multiplexer should not affect the operation of primary multiplexer. The equipment shall be compact and composite construction including power supply, switching circuits, control units, ringer and remote supervisory facility. The system shall have redundant power supply units or each individual card shall have its own inbuilt DC-DC converter. The channel interface units associated with primary multiplexer should be hot replaceable without affecting the operation and reliability of primary multiplexer. Following documents shall be supplied with each of the multiplexer. Routine test results, operating and user manual, installation manual, fault localization and troubleshooting manual, and PCB layout circuit diagram and part list as required for installation, operation and maintenance. The types of interfaces of primary MUX are voice interface, data interface, digital subscriber line interface. The technical requirements of primary MUX on aggregate side are Pulse code modulation or PCM, timing information, digital interface at 2048 kilobits per second. Specifications of output port 120 ohms balanced is shown on screen. Specification of output port 75 ohm unbalanced is shown on screen. Jitter transfer function as per ITUTG 735 Loss and recovery of frame alignment is shown on screen Alarms are shown on screen Programmable features, network monitoring and control are shown on screen Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for 4 wire interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for 2 wire voice interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for 2 wire subscriber loop interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for two-wire exchange loop interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for two-wire hotline interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for low-speed data interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for 64 kilobits per second data interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for N into 64 kilobits per second data interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for E1 branching interface are shown on the screen. Technical requirements of primary MUX on channel side for ISDN digital subscriber line are shown on the screen. Drop insert requirement for primary MUX are as follows. It shall be possible to insert channels in the same time slot in both directions on the same drop insert multiplexer. Intermediate stations shall be digitally transparent to the time slots which are not dropped. The end-to-end -end performance of any channel for which intermediate multiplexer is transparent shall not deteriorate. However, the absolute group delay might be more than specified value due to delay introduced due to storage at each multiplexer. 
In case of total node failure, the two primary rate ports shall be directly connected. It shall be possible to drop insert any number of channels from or to either direction at any intermediate station. It shall support full cross connect between P1 port or P2 port or VF time slot. Any time slot on P1 or P2 port can be mapped to VF port and also any time slot of P1 port can be mapped to any other time slot of P2 port or vice versa. The equipment should have protection to ensure the availability of user channels on detection of failure on P1 or P2 stream in a link in conjunction with an external alternative 2 megabits per second stream on backup media. Conference facility requirements of primary MUX are shown on screen. Reliability considerations of primary MUX are shown on screen. Let us learn the details of power supply requirements of primary MUX. Let us learn the details of electromagnetic compatibility requirements of primary MUX. Testing of primary MUX is classified as system test, data interface test and voice interface test. The details of system test are shown on the screen. The details of VF interface test are shown on the screen. The details of test for 64 kilobits per second data interface and test for V35 data interface are shown on the screen. The details of test for IDSL are shown on the screen. Indenting description the indenting description checklist for MUX chassis is shown on screen. The indenting description checklist for voice interface cards is shown on screen. Indenting description checklist for data interface cards is given on the screen. The details of environmental conditions of primary MUX are shown on the screen. Learn about the web fill FlexiMux equipment. A web fill FlexiMux equipment is a primary MUX equipment designed to ITUT recommendations for E1 hierarchical level. It integrates voice and data traffic to E1 access points. The equipment can segregate the voice and data channels carried on the incoming E1 stream. The equipment offers drop insert facility at voice and data channel level. Webfill FlexiMux equipment is ideal for thin route multi hub communication scenario typically found in way station communication networks of Indian railways. Voice channels required for train traffic control and data channels required for SCADA, PRS, UTS applications at the way stations can be supported through E1 streams extracted from STM equipment working on OFC backbone. Web fill FlexiMux equipment can be configured dynamically from a remote central station through network management computer connected through a RS-232C interface. It has built-in supervisory and control functions which enable the system to work unattended at remote isolated stations. In case of any failure, online dynamic reconfiguration of channels can be done 
for alternative routing of all important channels. And the network switches back to its normal state as soon as the fault is removed. Salient features of WebFill FlexiMux equipments are the equipment is compliant with ITUT recommendations G703, G704, G711, G712, G713, G714, G732, G735, and G823. The equipment is compliant with RDSO specifications IRSTC 68 of 2004 for primary drop insert MUX with conference facility. The equipment supports dynamic branching through digital cross connect. The equipment has terminal, drop insert and branching configurations which are supportable. The equipment offers variety of voice and data interface units. We can have four varieties of voice interface and six varieties of data interface. The equipment supports digital conferencing for omnibus voice and data circuits. The equipment supports subrate multiplexing of low speed data transmission so that they can be put in one 64 kilobits per second channel so as to be carried on one time slot without wasting of number of cards. The equipment has built in jitter attenuator for better performance and is compliant with ITUT G823 recommendations regarding the control of jitter. The equipment offers integrated interface for network supervision and management. It has built in centralized monitoring of equipment alarms and external parameters. It also supports telecommand execution for remote control of auxiliary equipments like AC units, chargers, etc., which are associated with the MUX equipment. Special capabilities of WebFill FlexiMux equipment. The capabilities available are drop insert function, digital conferencing function, supervision and control functions. Details of drop insert function and digital cross connect function are shown on screen. Digital conferencing function is shown on screen. Supervision and control functions are shown on screen. Basic configuration in terminal mode for WebFill FlexiMux is shown on screen. The basic configuration in drop insert mode for WebFill FlexiMux is shown on screen. The WebFill FlexiMux equipment has the following modules housed in 19 inch sub rack. These are power supply module, network interface module, tributary module, voice access module, G703 compatible data interface module, low speed data interface module. The block diagram of WebFill FlexiMux is shown on the screen. Details of network interface module is shown on screen. Details of network interface module is shown on screen. Details of network interface module is shown on screen. Details of network interface module is shown on screen. Details of network interface module is shown on screen. Details of network interface module is shown on screen. Network interface module. The various displays available on the front panel are shown on the screen. Serial numbers 1 to 7 above are separately displayed 2MB, 
tributaries of the link in tandem. Details of tributary module is shown on screen. Details of tributary module is shown on screen. The block diagram of tributary module is shown on screen. Details 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 of power supply module is shown on screen. Details of power supply module is shown on screen. Details of power supply module is shown on screen. Voice interface. For voice, normally Various types of access interfaces are required to satisfy the user's requirement. The following standard interfaces are supported by the voice access module. These are 2-wire or 4-wire E&M interface, subscriber interface, exchange interface and hotline interface. Details of data interface module is shown on screen. Details of data interface module is shown on screen. Details of data interface 64 kilobits per second G703 module is shown on screen. The subrack and its slot alignment in WebFill Fleximux equipment is shown on screen. The subrack slot details are shown on the screen.